The climate emergency requires countries to transition away from fossil fuels. But we need to be careful about the alternative energy sources we choose. In particular, concern is growing over the use of biomass for energy. Biomass energy is generated when wood or other plant material is burnt to generate heat and electricity. Worldwide, the main source of biomass is wood from forests. Many governments treat biomass energy as zero carbon at the point of combustion and subsidise it like renewables such as solar or wind. As a result, the use of biomass for energy has expanded rapidly in the UK and the EU over the last 15 years. While the EU is a major producer of wood biomass, both the EU and the UK are net importers, mostly from the United States, Canada and Russia. The problem is, burning biomass isn't zero carbon. In fact, it produces more carbon dioxide per unit of energy generated than almost all fossil fuels. The treatment of biomass as zero carbon in policy frameworks rests on the argument that biomass emissions will be reabsorbed by forest growth, particularly from trees planted to replace those cut down to burn. However, growing trees to maturity takes time, many years. Depending on the feedstock used, for example whether it's whole trees or sawdust, biomass burning increases global warming for decades to centuries. This is called the carbon payback period. The time it takes for carbon dioxide levels to return to what they would have been if biomass had not been used. During this carbon payback period, there is more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere than there would otherwise have been. It's argued that this is OK because future forest growth will absorb the emissions. But the higher levels during the carbon payback period are a real problem given the urgency of the climate challenge. New research from Chatham House and Woodwell Climate Research Centre calculated the real climate impact of burning US wood pellets in the UK and EU. Emissions were estimated from three sources. First, from the harvest of the source forests in the United States, the decay of roots and unused logging residues left in the forest after harvest, and the foregone removal of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere had the trees been left to grow. Second, from the energy used in harvesting and processing the trees and transporting the pellets. And third, from burning the wood pellets in power stations in the UK and EU. In 2019, according to this analysis, US sourced pellets burnt for energy in the UK were responsible for between 13 million and 16 million tonnes of carbon dioxide, equivalent to the annual greenhouse gas emissions from 6 million to 7 million passenger vehicles. But because biomass is treated as zero carbon, almost none of these emissions were included in the UK's national greenhouse gas reports. And the removal of forest carbon from US forests isn't included accurately in US reports, either. In effect, public money is being used to increase carbon dioxide emissions in the atmosphere for decades, or even centuries. This is not consistent with the Paris Agreement's aim of peaking global emissions as soon as possible. In the next 10 years, we need to cut global emissions in half, not increase them, and hope future forests will take care of the problem. That means supporting genuinely zero-carbon renewable options and restricting biomass burning to only those categories of feedstock with the lowest carbon payback periods, residues and wastes such as sawdust, shavings, limbs or branches. Only in this way can we ensure that using biomass contributes to tackling the climate emergency rather than making it worse.